In this section, we'll be solving equations with radicals, and our goal is to eliminate the radicals and then proceed from there on. So the steps to solve these equations is to get the radical alone on one side, completely by itself, equals some other material, and then raise both sides of the equation to the appropriate power to eliminate the radical. And then whatever you get, you solve that equation, and the mandatory last step is to check the solution in the original equation to make sure you get a true statement. So let's look at the first example here. We have square root of x plus 2 equals 5. Since the square root is all by itself, we're going to be ready to square both sides. So we're going to square both sides of the equation, and we end up with x plus 2 because remember the square and the radical make each other go away equals 25 then you subtract 2 from both sides and you get x equals 23 now before you do anything you do a quick check in the original problem is 23 plus 2 under the radical equal to 5 and you get square root of 25 equals 5 which is 5 equals 5 so we say yes it checks out Part B, again, since the radical is all by itself, we are ready to square, not square actually, you notice it's a cube, so the appropriate power here would be to cube both sides to undo the cube root. So once I cube both sides, the cube root goes away and I get x minus 4 equals 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, and then I add 4, so x is equal to 12. Then I do a quick check is cube root of 8, not 8 actually, 12 is what we found, so I plug in 12 back in there. Is cube root of 12 minus 4 equals 2. That's going to be cube root of 8 equals 2, which is 2 equals 2, so it checks out, and we get x equals 12. The main thing is for cube roots, normally if you do the work correctly, you are going to get the solution that will check out. But for square roots, sometimes you may get an answer where you get no solution if you check it back in the original problem. Okay, part C, um, notice I need to do this first. I need to get the radical all by itself on one side. And this is not by itself. I have this 3 to get rid of first. So I get rid of the 3. That's going to give me square root of x minus 5 equals negative 2. Now I'm ready to square both sides, so when I square both sides, I get x minus 5 equals two, negative 2 squared is 4. Then I add 5 to both sides, and we get x equals 9. But then again, I have to go check this quickly in the original problem. So is 9 minus 5 under the radical plus 3 equals 1? 9 minus 5 is square root of 4 plus 3 equals 1. That's a 2 plus 3 is that equal to 1, and it looks like I get 5 equals 1. That doesn't work. That's a no, so x is not equal to 9, and I actually have no solution for this problem because the solution I found did not work in the original problem. We could have noticed that right here, too, because a square root cannot equal a negative number if it's a positive square root. Part D, again, I'm trying to get this guy alone, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. That's going to give me square root of 2x plus 5 equals 3. Now that the square root is alone, I'm ready to cube both sides. Oh, I'm sorry, square, I mean, because it's a square root, not a cube root. So square both sides. And once I do that, I get the radical gone, 2x plus 5 is equal to 3 squared, which is 9, minus 5, minus 5, that's 2x equals 4, and we think x is equal to 2. We do a quick check in the original problem, that's 2 times 2 plus 5, plus 2 is that equal to 5. That's going to be 4 plus 5 plus 2 equals 5. That's going to be square root of 9 plus 2 is that equal to 5. That's going to be a 3 plus 2, which really is a 5, so x equals 2 checks out. In part E, I have this radical alone, and I have this radical alone as well, so it looks like I'm ready to square both sides. 
and once I square both sides I get 5z minus 1 equals z plus 1 because the radicals are gone. I subtract z from both sides, that's going to be 4z minus 1 equals 1. Add 1 to both sides, that's 4z equals 2, and we think z is equal to 1 half. But then again, I have to check this quickly in the original problem. That's going to give me 5 times a half minus 1. Is that equal to a half plus 1? That's going to be 5 halves minus 1. Is that equal to a half plus 1? Well, 5 halves is going to be 5 halves minus 2 halves, if I multiply top and bottom of this by 2. So that's going to be 3 halves. And then if I multiply top and bottom of this right side by 2 as well, I get 3 halves. So it looks like I get 3 halves over 3 halves on both sides. And z is equal to a half. Part F, in solving this equation, we realize the radical is not alone. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And we have y plus 1 equals. These are not like terms, so I just leave them as y minus 1. Now I'm ready to square both sides. Now be careful, these guys on the right simplify and give me y plus 1. But on the left, I really have a binomial times another binomial. So I have to multiply that out fully and not make any mistakes in the process. So that's going to be y squared minus 1y minus another y plus 1. So ultimately what I have on the left is y squared minus... 2y plus 1 equals the right side, which is y plus 1. Now notice this is a quadratic equation now. So I have to set it equal to 0. That's what you should be thinking. So I'm going to do minus y, minus y, minus 1, minus 1. And I have my 0 on the right side, and I have y squared minus 3y. And these guys are gone anyway. So now I factor a GCF of y and I end up with y minus 3 equals 0 and that's going to give me two possible solutions either y equals 0 or y equals 3 because I set both of them equal to 0 but I have to go back and check y equals 0 and I have to check y equals 3 and notice when I check y equals 0 in the original problem I get a false statement. Whereas when I check the 3 in the original problem, replacing all the y's, I end up with a true statement. So only one of them works. This one doesn't work. This one is my solution. y equals 3 is the only solution to this radical equation. In part g, again, it looks like my radical is already alone by itself. So I'm ready to square both sides. So I'm going to square the left, square the right, and we're going to end up with b squared minus 2b plus 1 equals, I have to square the b, b squared. Now it looks like it's a quadratic equation, but once I subtract b squared from both sides, I get negative 2b plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to add 2b to both sides, that's 1 equals 2b divide by 2 and we think b is equal to 1 half. But I have to go and check it in the original problem. So that's going to be a half squared minus 2 times a half plus 1. Is that equal to a half in the original problem? That's going to be 1 fourth minus 1 plus 1. Is that equal to a half? Well these guys cancel and it looks like I do get a half equals a half. The square root of one fourth is one half. So my answer is equal to a half. Okay, let's solve this equation. Notice the square root is not alone. I'm going to move the x to the other side. So I have square root of one minus x equals one minus x. Now I'm ready to square both sides. So I'm going to square the left, square the right. Notice on the right you have two of them. So the left side gives me 1 minus x, but on the right I have to distribute this out and multiply it. 
So I get 1 minus x minus another x and then plus x squared. That's going to be 1 minus x equals 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Again, it's a quadratic equation, so we're going to move everything to one side and get a 0. That's going to give me, it looks like, negative x plus x squared. So what I have going on here is 0 equals x squared minus x, basically. I'm going to factor out an x. That's going to give me x minus 1. And that's going to pop out two possible solutions. One of them is 0 and the other one is 1. But I have to go back and check 0 and 1 and see if they work in the original problem. So when I check both of them, it looks like I get a true statement for both. So 0 is good and 1 is good. And this one, both solutions that we found work. Okay, part I, notice this radical is alone by itself. This one is not alone because there's this plus 1. But if I subtract 1 from both sides, then I still get the 1 on this side, and then this radical will be alone, but this one won't. So we're kind of stuck with these two radicals not being alone, and we're just going to go ahead and square both sides. But we have to be careful because while this guy disappears and gives me an x, this right side is actually a much harder problem. I have two binomials of this form, and I have to go multiply that out, and that's going to take some time and analysis. So I have square root of 5, basically the square root of x times minus 5 times square root of x minus 5. And then I have plus 1 times square root of x minus 5, plus another 1 times square root of x minus 5, and then plus 1. Now these have coefficient 1, and I can combine them to get two of them. This guy right here, there's two of them, and for every two, remember, one pops up, because if I have square root of two and square root of two, that's going to be square root of four, which really pops out just a two. So this is one of those problems. And then I have equals x. So now I combine like terms. These two give me a negative four, and I still have two radical x minus five. Now I'm going to get the radical by itself, so I'm going to move the x, and I'm going to add the 4. So I have 4 equals 2 square root of x minus 5. Now, since I can divide by 2, I will do so, and I'm finally at this step, which gets me ready to square things again. Once I square them again, I end up with 4 equals x minus 5, now that's a linear equation, and I can add 5 to both sides, and we think x is equal to 9. Notice what happened. I squared both sides, but I still have this nasty radical business going on. Then I got the radical alone again, and once I squared, then they went away and I got x equals 9, but I have to go back and check x equals 9. So let's go back to the original problem over here and check x equals 9. And it looks like if I plug in 9 and all the x's in the original problem, I end up with 3 equals 3, so the one solution x equals 9 that we found for this equation works. 